Welcome to my first video on speeding up Excel. Uh, today we're going to talk about control and shift mixed with arrow keys for the most part. Uh, and the main goal of this sort of thing uh, is so that if you're working, especially on the keyboard, which will make you much faster at Excel, you don't have to take your hands off of the keyboard as often if you use these sorts of shortcuts to navigate the sheet. Uh, and so the less you use the mouse, the better off you are in a lot of cases. Hopefully this will kind of help you uh, do that more often. So this data set uh, is just, uh, I believe, every position player who hit, maybe even some of the pitchers who hit, uh, pulled from Fangraphs.com uh, in 2014. Uh, so we have a bunch of baseball players and their data, uh, and I want to move around the sheet. So I'm up in A1, let's say. Uh, I want to move uh, over and see how far over my columns go. The control button is going to let me do that very easily. So I'm going to hit control right. It's going to jump over here to player ID. Oh, and before I go any further, if you would like to use this particular data set, it's going to be down in the description section uh, of the YouTube video. So now I've been able to jump over to V. If I control left, I'm going to go back to A. Uh, and similarly, if I want to go down, I can hit control down, goes down to row 957, control up will bring me back up to 1. So it allows me to kind of bounce around to the edges of my sheet, right? Hold control, hit right, down, left, up, and I jump all the way around, okay? Uh, so that's pretty useful, especially if you're uh, kind of out here in the middle of uh, no man's land, uh, you know, so I'm in R311, let's say I need to get a new column uh, calculation going uh, over in W, which is my next unpopulated column. I can just hit Control Up, you know, hit over and then name it whatever it's going to be and start my calculation, run it down, all those sorts of things. Uh, and so Control lets me do that, uh, and that's pretty handy. Uh, but if we want to make this even more useful, what we got to do is add the Shift key. So a lot of times, what we want to do is also highlight big chunks of pieces. Uh, and so let's kind of go out here in the middle of the sheet. So if I start from L11 and I hit shift, if I'm holding shift down and start hitting the right key, it's just going to add a column going right every time I hit the right key. So uh, shift allows me to kind of grab chunks of data. So now if I'm holding left, I can go the other direction up. I'll grab things going up, down. I'll grab things going down, etc. So if I hold the shift key down, I can grab big chunks uh, of cells that you know, will allow me to move those things out or um, delete them or do all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so uh, they have to be contiguous. So anytime you're holding shift, it'll only do a, a chunk. It'll, it won't let you do like stuff in L and stuff in P. You have to use control to do that. Um, and we'll talk about that in another video. Um, uh, but it does allow you to grab chunks. If I mix that with the idea of control, uh, so now I'm going to hit the left arrow key. I'm going to hit control left up. I'm back in A1. Uh, and let's say I want to get all the names of the players. I can just hit control shift down. So if I hold control shift and hit down, it'll grab all of column A. And so now I have all that. If I need more columns than that, I can hold shift now and start hitting right. And it'll add more columns. Or if I want all of the data, control shift right will grab everything going right. So again, if I hit left, go back up to A1, control shift down right, I can grab the entire data set. Uh, and again, this is pretty useful for things like sorting uh, and for moving things around. Uh, and I'll show you some more examples. And if you want specific pieces, so let's say I only want some counting stats here. So I want home runs, runs, RBIs, stolen bases. Uh, I can go to E1, hold shift down, hit right, right, right. I now have the four columns I want. Control shift down. Uh, and I now have that chunk, and I can move it or uh, modify it separately. Um, well, like I said, generally when you're sorting, you want the whole uh, chunk. So I'll show you if we want to if we want a subset of these players uh, somewhere, we can sort uh, to keep things in line. So for instance, Resnick Castillo, uh, when we sort, no matter where he goes, needs to have 10 games, 40 plate appearances, two homers, six runs, six RBI, three stolen bases, etc. Uh, and so I'm going to use control shift starting in A1. I'm going to hit right down. Uh, I'm going to sort the data. And let's say we're looking for players with more than 40 home runs. So I go to home runs, make sure this is largest to smallest. Uh, hit OK. And here are all the home, home run guys. So everybody who hit 30 or more home runs starting with Lucas Duda here. 
Um, but in this case, uh, I can then make sure, okay, if I go look for uh, Rusny, <clears throat> he's now in row uh, 364, but he still has 10 games. He still has 40 plate appearances, uh, a couple home runs, six RBIs, etc. So he still has all the stats that he should have because we sorted the whole chunk of data, which is generally what you want to do. Um, uh, now if I want to create a separate sheet, uh, so I create a separate sheet, and I'm going to call this 30 plus home runs, okay? And so now I want to look, I sorted it, so now I can grab all these guys who have 30 or more home runs uh, pretty quickly and easily and move them to a new sheet. Um, I'm going to start here with Lucas Duda, hit control shift up, control shift right, oh, as long as you're holding control shift, you just hold up right, uh, and then I can hit control C, so I'm copying all of that, and I go to the new sheet, I hit control V, and now I have a separate data set. So now I can manipulate this stuff uh, in here if I want to do something with those particular players um, while leaving uh, everything else alone. So I still have my original data set here uh, with all of the components of it in case I want to do something else with that data. Uh, and I can play around with this in here. And if I make a mistake, you know what, I can go back and, and pull it out again. So this is the sort of thing I use. Uh, one of the things I use control and control shift for quite a bit is moving data around like that. You know, or if you want to move, uh, you know, I don't care about the team so much. I don't want to lose that data. You know, I can control shift down and move it over here to, a, you know, where it's out of the way and then delete column B and reformat my, my stuff. So you can do things like that too. Okay. Um, not always is it quite this pretty though, so there's something in every cell here that makes it really easy to jump around the big chunk. Uh, sometimes we have stuff where it isn't quite that nice, so for instance this is from Google's uh, annual report, uh, and what you'll see is there's a lot of blank cells, uh, which can interfere with this process a little bit. So, uh, you know, I go over here, here's my, my uh, if I'm in D14, I go down, down, you'll see that some of these are merged cells, some of them aren't, uh, and so some of them are blank, some of them are full. So when I hit control down, it's going to jump over that blank, it's going to go to the dollar sign. And then I hit down, control down again, it's only going to go down one, ro uh, one row. And then I hit control down again, it only goes down one row. Then I hit it again, it goes over the blank and down to the next number. So it only goes to the next populated item. Uh, preventing me from jumping all the way down to the bottom of the sheet, at least the populated part of the sheet. Uh, I can get around this a little bit uh, if I really uh, get used to using the keyboard all the time. So instead of hitting control and then only hitting down once, I can hold control and hold down. It'll go all the way down to the last possible row, which is 1,048,576. And then while still holding control, hit up again, uh, and it'll jump back up to row 72 which is the bottom similarly if I want to go right I can just hold control and right until it goes all the way over to XFD and then hit left and it'll go back to X okay uh, so it's a little bit more work uh, but still pretty quick and easy nothing too bad okay so I'm gonna go back over so if I can hold, hold control left until it goes all the way back over to A um, and now I'm going to go down here to B13. So let's say I want to highlight things using Control Shift, um, like we did in the last one. Now I can hold Control Shift right until it goes all the way over, then hit left, then hold down until it goes all the way down, then hit up. And now I've highlighted that whole chunk uh, of stuff, even though there's a lot of things kind of in the way. Uh, it, it's still pretty easy to to grab a big chunk like that. And sometimes that'll allow me to do things like if we made a consistent uh, error somewhere and need to fix something, we can use things like find and select and replace things because in this case we're probably not going to move anything around. This isn't a data set that we're manipulating. You know, this is a, uh, a very set um, piece of uh, the annual reports. We want things in this particular order and the numbers all need to kind of stay where they're at. Um, but if we want to find and replace things, uh, we can highlight that chunk and do it within the chunk. Uh, if we want to search for a particular thing, same thing, uh, and other stuff like that. So, anyway, 
Control and Control Shift, uh, both really useful. Uh, what I would challenge you to do if you want to really uh, get good at this is for, you know, especially if you're working in Excel frequently, a few times a week or every day uh, as a student or as a job, uh, you know, go ahead and only navigate the sheet with the keyboard for a couple of weeks. Uh, and if you've done this for a few hours, uh, especially doing things that you typically do over and over again, what you'll see is where this is speeding you up and where it might not be and that'll teach you when, when you should or shouldn't uh, go to the mouse uh, and it'll make you faster I promise so uh, the more like I said the more you generally keep things uh, on the keyboard your hands are on the keyboard uh, I, I think you're generally faster there are a few things the mouse does really well uh, so I don't think you should avoid it completely uh, but if you do avoid it completely for a few weeks you'll see where it helps and where it hurts uh, and it will make you a lot quicker to excel so uh, I guess we'll see you next time we'll talk about some other things that can speed you up in excel um, uh, thanks for watching my video